In this video, I will show you how to start working with spectral libraries in the Nmap box, the free and open source QGIS plugin that has been developed to visualize and process imaging spectroscopy data, as expected from the upcoming Nmap satellite mission. For that, we will use the example data, which is provided with the Nmap box, to explore the software. In order to download and open it, go to the tab Project in the menu bar and select Load Example Data. In case you haven't done this before, you will be asked to download the test data first. As this is true for our case, a dialog window opens. Confirm with Yes, and the data set will be downloaded. After the download, a map view opens automatically and the example data are visualized. You will find yourself in the southwestern part of Berlin, capital of Germany. Hi-res underscore Berlin dot BSQ is a high resolution image with three bands covering the blue, green, and red parts of the visual spectrum. The raster image with the coarser spatial resolution named Nmap Berlin dot BSQ is a simulated Nmap image from which we would like to collect spectral profiles. It was acquired in August 2009 and has a spectral resolution of 177 bands and a spatial resolution of 30 meters. In the following part, we will collect spectra, edit their attributes, and export them to different spectral library file formats. To collect spectral profiles from the simulated Nmap image, we will need to activate the Cursor Location Map tool and the option Collect Spectral Profiles. Now, click on any Nmap pixel you want to explore spectrally. A new spectral library window will open that shows the spectral profile of the selected pixel. You can rename the spectral library in the Data View panel by just clicking right and selecting the relevant option. I like to name it Speclib. When clicking on another raster pixel, the spectral profile updates accordingly. If you like to add a profile to the spectral library, just click on the plus button. If you activate the Add Profiles Automatically option, every newly selected spectral profile of an Nmap pixel will be added automatically. In the Nmap box, each spectral library is technically speaking a vector layer. Like every vector layer, a spectral library has an attribute table. You can use the table to modify profile attributes or to delete profiles. For that, editing mode needs to be enabled. Here I name the previously extracted first and the seventh spectral profile as vegetation. To delete entire profiles, select the respective data rows representing spectral profiles and press the Remove Selected Features button. As they are vector layers, we can visualize spectral libraries in a map canvas as well. Open the Map Context menu with a right click in the Map View window, go to Add Spectral Library, and select the spectral library you would like to add to the map. Now we can see the map locations of our imported spectral profiles. You can use tools like Zoom To or Pan To to navigate spatially to the selected profiles. To export the profiles in your spectral library, Open the Export menu and select the target file format. You can choose GeoPackage or the NV standard spectral library format. The default format to save spectral libraries is the GeoPackage format. I will save my spectral library in this format and name it MySpecLib with the file extension .gpkg. Once saved, it will also appear under the Data Sources panel. With right click and selecting Open Spectral Library Viewer, we can open and visualize it. Alternatively, you can save it as NV Spectral Library. This time I will save it under the name myNVSpecLib.sli. .sli is a file extension commonly associated with NV Spectral Library files. I will now open a new Spectral Library window to demonstrate how to import Spectral Library files. Here, you activate the Import Profile dialog that allows you to import spectral profiles from other data sources. I will load my previously saved NV Spectral Library file. If needed, you could adjust the field value import, meaning how attributes of the import data will be mapped to attributes of the Nmap box spectral library. In the following part, we will collect spectral profiles using the Profile Source panel. You may also have noticed, since the high resolution image only consists of three bands, the red, green, and blue, the spectral profile has only three data points too. You can use the spectral profile source panel on the left-hand side at the bottom to define from which raster source 
you'd like to collect spectral profiles. For example, I select now the simulated Nmap image only. While using the high-res image for better orientation, we can show the boundaries of the larger Nmap pixels. Right-click to get the context menu, select crosshair and then pixel grid, and the Nmap images data source. Now, you will always see the boundaries of the Nmap raster pixels, even if you are located on the high-resolution image. Instead of using the mouse, you can also use control and an arrow key to move the cursor location by one Nmap pixel into a direction of interest. Press control S to save the temporary profiles into the spectral library. Finally, you can activate Snap to Pixel Center to save a profile always at the center of the 30 by 30 meter Nmap pixel. In the following part, we will import spectra measured with an ASD field spectrometer. It might be the case that you have built your own spectral library using an ASD field spectrometer, for instance, measuring soil samples in the lab or different surface cover types during a field campaign to calibrate and validate hyperspectral remote sensing image data. You can access these functionalities using the Import Profile dialog, as we have just learned. The Nmap box supports several external spectral library formats, including spectral profiles measured with an ASD field spectrometer. Let us assume we have recorded some profiles with an ASD spectrometer in the field, with which we now want to work in the Nmap box. We select ASD field spectrometer as data source, navigate to the location of recorded spectra, select the spectral profiles, and import them. ASD files contain a lot of information. By default, the Nmap box provides two predefined attribute columns, namely name for text entries of data type string and profiles for spectral profile entries of data type binary, where we could map ASD file specific attributes to. Further, we could choose the copy attributes function to integrate more ASD file information into the attribute fields of our Nmap box spectral library. Let's add the instrument number, the sample count, and white reference taken in the field. We will map spectrum to the profiles column and co to the name column. Of course, this is a very concrete example, but the functionalities demonstrated will give you the flexibility for adaptation to your specific needs. Now press OK to import the profiles. The Import Profile dialog can also be used to load spectral profiles extracted from a raster using a vector source. The latter could be points or polygons. In our example dataset, we have a point vector layer available that defines the positions of different land cover types in Berlin, named landcover underscore Berlin underscore point dot gpkg. With the help of the vector source, the location where we want to extract spectral profiles from the raster image is defined. Open the import menu and select the format Raster. In our example, we would like to extract spectral profiles from the simulated Nmap scene that corresponds to a known land cover point location. Therefore, we are choosing the hyperspectral image Nmap underscore Berlin.bsq as raster source and the land cover point vector file as vector source. Again, you can add missing fields to your spectral library to import them as well. Press OK to start the import. Now, we have a spectral profile for each point in the vector layer. This completes my introduction on how to work with spectral libraries in the Nmap box. If you would like to learn more, I highly recommend having a look into the Nmap box documentation. <laughs> <laughs>